Les noms ont tous le pouvoir. In order to write full, correct sentences, we need to make sure that the nouns in our sentences are having the correct effect on the rest of the sentence. To do that, we are going to talk about a lot of different types. Uh, we're going to use a lot of different vocabulary, like nouns, proper nouns, common nouns, pronouns, disjoint nouns, articles, definite articles, indefinite articles, adjectives, agreement, and verbs, and conjugation. So pay close attention, but rewind whenever you need to. Again, our objective is that you can recognize that nouns have all the power. Adjectives must agree with the nouns they talk about in number and gender. Verbs must be conjugated according to the subject, which is a noun. And all common nouns need articles or possessive adjectives or partitives, which we're going to learn about later. So in other words, those articles need to agree with a noun. Let's start with the most difficult of these. Let's start with verb conjugation. Most Romance languages have a very specific structure to creation of sentences, and it mostly goes like this, subject, then verb, then object. So when we hear things like I, to be tired, we know this is correct because things like he am kind have a verb that is not conjugated according to its subject. We know that when we conjugate a verb according to the subject, it sounds correct. I am tired. He is kind. So in order to conjugate a verb, we actually need to know what the subject is. And I'm going to talk really briefly about some subject pronouns that will help us um, understand this conjugation. These are the subject pronouns that you will see on verb charts. We're going to talk really quickly about pronunciation of these. Je. Now again, the J has that J sound in French. Tu. Where the U sound has that E. U, where you're going, saying E and quickly changing your mouth to a kissy face to get that proper U sound. Il. For he or it. Elle. For she or it. On. For one. Or sometimes we. Nous, again, the S is not pronounced. Vous, S is not pronounced. Il and elle, again, the S's are not pronounced. And notice they sound exactly like il, elle. The only way to tell the difference between those when you're speaking your sentence is the fact that the verb is conjugated to match those subjects. Here is a lovely verb chart of our favorite verb, être, which means to be. Être is one of the most used French verbs and also one of the most used English verbs, so it is very irregular, which means that memorizing it can be difficult. So there's a lovely chart here to help you recall how to um, place them correctly and thus hopefully be able to use them more and help in memorization. We're going to talk about some other ways to help with memorization in a bit, but we want to talk about the conjugation first. So when we look at a sentence and we want to say, I am cheap, we can't just put in the verb to be, I to be cheap, because we know that doesn't make sense. We match the verb with the subject. So we say, I am cheap. Je suis avare. Now notice here, this next word starts with a vowel sound. So when I say this sentence, it's going to sound a little bit different than when I say the sentence with the next word starts with a consonant sound. So let's talk about, I am tired. Je suis fatigué. Notice there was no z in front of fatigué because I did not need what's called a liaison between the final consonant sound and a vowel of the next word. So let's talk about pronunciation really quick without the next word being a vowel. Je suis. Notice u i makes a oui sound. Tu es. The final s again is not pronounced. Il est. On. Excuse me. Elle est. On. Nous sommes, vous êtes, ils or elles sont. And again, none of these final consonants are pronounced. Let's talk really quickly about some patterns to help you recall information because again, what we're hoping to do is find patterns in these charts that will help us recall information and retain it. So for example, uh, if you can recall right now that to a is es, it will help you recall and remember future verb charts because most verbs for the to form are going to end in s or es. Take a look at the vu form. It looks like that es is on the end of vous êtes. So it's as if it uses the first two letters of être and the last two letters of est to create et. Je suis and nous sommes both end in an S. Il, elle, a, and il, elle, sont both end in a T. Again, try to find patterns that help you recall information. 
Let's talk about how these are pronounced when the next word is uh, the next word after that verb conjugation starts with a vowel sound. So tu es avare. Il est avare. Nous sommes avare. Elles sont avare. So again, that last consonant is actually going to be pronounced in what's called a liaison. There are three types of nouns that you're going to see within your sentences. Proper nouns, pronouns, common and normal nouns. Proper nouns are the easiest, easiest for us to remember because they are all capitalized. And most of them do not require uh, an article to go with it. You don't say the Joe of Arc, you say Jean d'Arc. You don't say the Marie Antoinette, you just say Marie Antoinette. For Paris, you would just say Paris instead of the Paris. You will often use pronouns that uh, to replace those proper nouns because you don't want to say Jean d'Arc est une femme, Jean d'Arc aime le Dieu, Jean d'Arc est brave. You would like to say, well, she. And we've already talked about some of those subject pronouns, and we're now going to talk about district pronouns in just a moment. But I'd like you to see the difference between the two. Do you remember when we talked about how verb, uh, sentence structure is subject, then verb, then object? So our subject pronouns are going to replace the subject nouns of a sentence, whereas disjoint pronouns are going to replace objects of your sentence. I'm sure you remember all those lovely subject pronouns. Je, tu, il, elle, on, nous, vous, il, and elle. Notice how they are all the subjects of these sentences. This is different with disjoint pronouns because they are not the subject of this sentence, and thus they actually look quite a bit different. Notice again at the very end here. Tu aimes moi? J'aime toi. Super. Rendez-moi les devoirs. Écoutez eux. Let's talk about the pronunciation of disjoint pronouns. O, I, and O, Y in French make a wa sound. So you have moi and toi. U, I makes a oui sound. Lui. E is like the word heureux, which means happy. It's just an e sound. Now let's find some similarities and differences between the subject pronouns and the disjoint pronouns to help us recall this information. Notice how the nu, nu, and vous forms sound exactly the same. They look exactly the same. Same thing with elle and elle. The tu form starts with a t, and the toi starts with a t. This might help you recall that information. And if you've ever watched Miss Piggy, you can remember her saying, moi? That might help you recall that information. So technically, we only have two more bits of information to remember when it comes to remembering disjoint pronouns. Lui and e, for him or them. That makes it a lot easier to recall all of this information, doesn't it? Now that we understood our pronouns, let's now discuss common. Common nouns are not pronouns, and they are not proper nouns that are capitalized. They're everything else. All of these lovely things. And what's important to remember about all these things is they are common nouns and they are going to need an article of some sort or a possessive adjective or partitive or demonstrative, which we'll learn all those others later. But for now, trying to recall what type of article they need is very important because every noun in foreign languages that are romance languages require an agreement with a gender and number of said noun. So, for example, dance is feminine. La danse. Café, uh, coffee is masculine. Same as perfume, croissant. La mode, fashion is feminin. Soccer, cheese, and chocolate are all masculine. So we need to make sure that the articles that they use match that in that gender, as well as whatever number that we're discussing. There are two types of articles, indefinite and definite. Indefinite articles mean a, ain, or some in the plural form. Definite articles all mean the. We use indefinite articles when we haven't mentioned something before. Oh, mon Dieu, il y a un zombie. Oh, no, there's a zombie. Le zombie a mangé Rachel. The zombie ate Rachel. Okay, this is the zombie that we were just talking about that we hadn't mentioned before. Let's talk a little bit about pronunciation of the indefinite and definite articles. Notice how un has an N on the end. It is a final consonant that is not normally pronounced. But with N and M, they make the vowel sound before them nasalized. So instead of saying un, we say un. 
Again, we do not pronounce the N, and the U sound becomes nasalized. There's an E on the end of this one, which tells us that that N sound can be pronounced. It can pop. We have UN. S is a, a consonant that is not often pronounced at the end of a word, so we have DE, unless the next word following it is a word that starts with a vowel sound, like ordinateur, then you will have desordinateur to create an liaison between the final consonant of one word and the next word that starts with a vowel sound. Definite articles are interesting. We have le, la for feminine, et l'apostrophe for words that start with a vowel sound, like ordinateur, which is normally masculine, but because it starts with a vowel sound, we'll use l apostrophe and lay. Again, just like day, when it's followed by a word that starts with a vowel sound, we'll use a liaison for les ordinateurs, whereas we would not use a liaison with les livres, because livre is not a vowel sound. The choice to use definite versus indefinite articles, for the most part, can be tricky. So, a lot of times when we're stating a sentence, for example, I want a cookie, and we want to translate that into French, it's pretty easy because if it's an indefinite article, it makes sense for us to include it. Je veux un biscuit, I want a cookie. However, with some definite articles, it can be difficult to determine if we do need it or don't need it. But think of this, if you're in French and it doesn't sound right to put an indefinite article, use a definite article as a default. Because take a look at this example. Tu aimes le chocolat, in French is, you like the chocolate? Now, English, that does not sound right. But in French, every normal noun needs something in front of it, like an article, a possessive, or partitive, something. So, if you're unsure, you see a noun in your sentence, think, okay, does it have some sort of article? If it does not, and a uh, or ain does not make sense, just insert a definite article. Here's some other examples. Oui, j'aime le chocolat. Yes, I like the chocolate. Again, that doesn't sound right to English-speaking ears, but in French, we need it. Otherwise, it sounds just as bad as including it. So a quick summary of articles. Articles must agree with the noun in gender and number. And determining whether you're going to use indefinite versus definite articles, think about what would I say in English. And if a or n does not make sense, use a definite article then. Let's move on to ad adjectives must also agree with nouns in gender and number, just like articles. However, adjectives can be placed after the verb when they're describing the verb. For example, l'ordinateur est blanc. La craie est blanche. Tu es gentil? Je suis gentille. Tu es intelligent? Je suis intelligente. Notice, when objects or people are feminine, we need an E at the end of our adjectives. Now let's talk about some common types of adjective agreement so that you can see some patterns. Most adjectives agree when the feminine form by just adding a simple E to the end. So let's take a look at these yellow categories which are the most common adjective type agreements. In fact, this first one is what you're going to use the most often. The masculine form is considered the default form of any adjective. To make it feminine, it's pretty simple. Most of the time, you're just adding an E, unless it already has an E. If it has an E with an accent, that's considered a regular consonant, and you're going to add another E. Plurals are very similar to English because all you need to do is add an S. Now, some irregular adjectives might end in an X, or be completely irregular because they are used so often. Things that end in X, like EUX, is a E sound, or curieuse, or curieux. Let's take a look at these examples in written form and make some summarize, um, some generalizations. So, just like articles, adjectives must agree in gender and number. And for the most part, when they become feminine, or change to meet feminine forms, we simply need to add an E to them. When they become plural, we simply add an S. If they already have an E, we do not need to add an extra E unless there's an accent, and then we treat it like any other consonant. 
So, what have we learned today? Nouns have all the power. Adjectives must agree with them in number. Verbs must be conjugated according to the subject. And all common nouns need some sort of article. And that article.